Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the workers' retreat. We thank you for all that you have taught us since last night. We thank you for all that we learned, for the practical details of life that we learned in the men's fellowship, in the women's fellowship, and for these questions and the answers that came forth from your own children. Lord, we're praying that all the answers we have received from your word, that your spirit will quicken them in our hearts, that the solutions you have given us will go back home, will practice these things, and we know that our lives will not be the same anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that right now as we look into your word again, you'll help us. Amen. You'll lead us. Amen. Speak to us, O Lord, Amen. that our lives may achieve what you destined our lives to achieve. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The Bible has presented us with three types of people as we go through the whole Bible. We've had people in the Bible that had a name. A name came on the register of the people that came into this world. But it appeared that they had nothing in life to do. They came on record that they lived, no assignment, no goal, no achievement, no success, they just pass through life like the birds of the air pass through life. They do not leave any mark behind. Of such people, we have the Bible record. Sometimes the Bible gives just a verse of scripture to them, mentions their names, and it says, so and so lived, gave the number of years, had sons and daughters, and died. You might wonder why the Bible will take time to mention the names of people that did nothing, they were nothing, they achieved nothing, they died with no record of any achievement left behind. All those names come into the scriptures, sometimes because we needed to know their genealogy. We needed to know, like David, for example, Going on to David, who is the real person that the Lord and the Word of God wanted to talk about. But for you to know that in the lineage of David, there were some people that came into this world. They were born, they lived. The only thing they did is that they were instruments of bringing a person like David into the world. Apart from that, nothing else. They lived, they died. They only remembered that they occupied space. Nothing they did. Nothing they achieved. And the majority of people in the world, they are like that. They have not been given anything to do. They themselves don't ask for anything to do. There is no vision. There is no mission. And there is no work. There is no success. There is no achievement. There's a second category of people we find in the Bible. These people, like I told you last night, they were called. They were given something to do. And these people, either they hid their talents or they didn't make use of their talents properly. But eventually, they failed. And eventually, it was like they didn't do anything. They tried to start. They made some endeavor. But they didn't have the qualities that will make a man a woman to get something started and then finish it up. And finish it up in a glorious manner in a challenging manner, in a way that God will say, that's my child, that's my servant, I placed him there, he did it, he finished it. We have a third category of people, they're in the minority. These were the people that were born. They had different circumstances in their birth. Some of them, they had difficulty, even from the time they were conceived. You can think of Jacob, what a struggle. Inside the womb, it was a great struggle. On the day of birth, it was a great struggle. In life, it was a great struggle. But that man, instead of getting discouraged, being in despair, thinking of death, saying, I don't think I'll ever make it. 
My mother even told me that when I was to be born, it was all with trouble. And the trouble is still there. At home, trouble. With my brother, trouble. With Laban, trouble. I'll never make it. He told Pharaoh, he said, you may not understand this, but that many have been the years, or few have been the years of their servant. It has been with travail and sorrow. And yet, that man made it. Now we talk about the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. There were people that were born like Jabez, all in sorrow. Everything that surrounded that man, Jabez, was total sorrow, suffering. But as was growing up, he knew that he was at the bottom of the ladder. All his colleagues, all the other people were above him. And he said, this will not be. I'm going to change this. Call it destiny. I will change it. Call it predestination. I will change it. Call it uh, something that my father, my mother predicted for me. That's why I was born. I will change it. And he became more honorable than all the rest of the people. He prayed. He said, Lord, I will not remain like this. I meant to get to the top of the mountain. I meant to be honorable. I meant to do something for God. In this, my short life, I'm going to make a mark in history. Eventually, he made it. Think about David. David was born, if you've read your Bible very well, he was the seventh of the seven sons. And then there were daughters. And he gave him work to do. But the nation didn't reckon with him. His father didn't reckon with him. And when Samuel came to choose a king, after Saul had failed, they didn't even call him there. But God had something for him to do. And eventually they called him. And he was very, very young. And looked very handsome. But just like a young boy. Just like a growing young man. They didn't know he could do anything. And the Lord said, up, anoint him. And he was anointed. From the moment he had been called and anointed, trouble started. He helped Saul just by playing instrument of music. And the evil spirit departed. Whose son is this? Whose boy is this? And he said, it's the son of Jesse. Ah, that boy will never leave my presence. This is good. Bring him near. And then he defeated Goliath. Saul told him, you cannot do it. He said, since I, I was a shepherd boy, I canceled something from the dictionary of life. I canceled the word impossibility. And I canceled the word fear. Those two words, I know those are the words that brought down the giants that had been before me. All the people that were ever born. Mark it down. Those two words, impossible, fear, those are the words that brought them down. Show me somebody who went to school and was not able to finish. Those two words, impossible and fear. Show me somebody that got into a marital home and has not been able to get the homes together. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of questions about my husband, about my wife, about this, about that. The people that are not able to make it eventually, those two words, one, impossible. The other one, fear. And show me the people that in this world, they're trying to do some business. And they get to that place, the door is locked. They get to that place, the wall is high. They get to that place, bribery and corruption will not allow them. And if they fail, and if they say, well, I will die of hunger. Maybe I should even kill myself. The two words, impossible and fear. So David said, when I knew that that is the word that brought trouble to everybody that ever lived before me, I determined that there will be two words I will never allow inside my heart. Never get into my system. Never get into my thought. I will never use the word impossible. I would always look at the bright side of life. And when a lion came, he told Saul, as the lion was coming, David, what were you thinking? Well, whatever I was thinking, I made sure that I closed the door to those two words. One, impossible. The other one, fear. And I rose up. I didn't think that the lion would kill me. I felt God had a purpose for my life. Lions don't kill the people that God has purpose in their lives. Persecutions don't destroy people that God has purpose in their lives. Problem don't drain and dry up the people that God has a purpose in their lives. 
And so I rose up. I caught that lion. I smote it and it died. When that lion died, I wasn't surprised. I knew that whenever there is a battle between me and a lion, the lion doesn't have a future, doesn't have a purpose of God. I have a purpose. He has to die. I have to live. And I didn't run back home and say, Daddy, I cannot stay there alone. No friend, no partner, no wife, not even any of my brothers joining me to be in the wilderness. I felt lonely. David never complained about loneliness. In the wilderness, in the day, in the night, he knew. I'm talking to you about leaders destined to succeed. And these are the things that make people to succeed. One, the word impossibility is not in their mind. It's not in their brain. They never use it. But you know, show me a zonal leader. The moment you say, zonal leader, we have a goal now. This is what we're going to do. Before he thinks about it, before he plans, before he can tell you any other thing, the word that comes out of his mouth is, uh, sir, impossible. Such a person will never succeed never tell me a wife that the wife came for counseling and as you are counseling and then you say well god can handle that man and the first word to come out of the woman is impossible that woman will never make it and show me a worker you issue a query and you say ah, why did you do this why did you do this and immediately the first thing that comes out of the heart is fear and he's already shivering and saying, they are going to terminate me. They are going to drive me away. I will never make it. Now I've known. It happened to my father. It happened to uncle. They told me in our family, nobody ever succeeds. He is not like Jabez. Who will say, I will change my destiny? That family history, I will change it. Whatever they said happened to so-and-so, happened to so-and-so. Not me. I am different. I am going to change my destiny. Those are the people that succeed. But the people that have a little problem here, a little problem here, those two words, impossibility, fear, they grip them. And so when the bear came, David rose up. David didn't say, uh -huh, I overcame the other time. I don't know what will happen now. He said, I know what will happen. I won't die before I get to the throne. And you know what kills people. They see the throne and they know that's where they're destined to go. They see the achievement, they see the goal, they see the success in front of them. And they know that is where God wants them to go. But they say, well, I know the throne is there. I know the success is there. I know the goal is there. But look at this bear. This bear will kill me before I get to that throne. Then that man will die. That's what killed the people before us. Fear, unbelief. And it's the unbelief that makes them to say, impossible. So David rose up. And said, Bear, I've been waiting for you. I like challenges. I like to try and test the power of God. All those psalms I've been writing and singing, I like to see the fulfillment. I like to see if it is true that if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Even in the presence of this bear, surely goodness and mercy will follow me. I will not die. I will live in the presence of the Lord forever. Singing and shouting, he rose up and he caught that bear. Before you know what was happening, young boy, he killed the lion. Jesus had not come. He had not been baptized in the Holy Ghost. He didn't speak in tongues. He didn't understand about casting out devils. He didn't know about a lot of things. But they that know their God shall do exploits. You cannot make such people afraid. They are destined to succeed. And then when Goliath was bragging, he wasn't prepared. You tell me. Somebody that will say, I say, brother, come. Do you see this uh, program? He said, yes, sir. Now, the last message, I wanted to give it before, but I'm calling on you. Come and give it. Impossible. Sir, I'm not prepared. I cannot do that. And because I didn't prepare, sir, you go and do it yourself. That's what I'm saying. The man was not prepared. He came. He only brought food. He didn't bring a cutlass. 
not even a knife, not even a gun. And then while he came there, he saw problem. Do you know people that run away because of problem? You see them on the street. Ah, sister, I used to see you in deeper life. Ah, I used to be there. Are you not there anymore? No, I'm not there. What happened? Ah, problem rose up in the house fellowship. Somebody stood up and the person was complaining bitterly. And the house fellowship leader did not know what to do. When I said, eh, so even in deeper life house fellowship, there can be trouble. Then I took my Bible and ran away. Since that time, I didn't come to deeper life. They'll never succeed. But David came. And what did he see? He saw problem. Oh, he said, thank God. Thank God for problem. Thank God for difficulty. Thank God for a day like this. This is the day the Lord has made. I'll be glad and rejoice in it. If there is no problem, why opportunity to pray? If there is no problem, why the promises in the Bible? If there is no problem, why do we have all these challenges in the Bible? If there were no problem, why did Jesus come on the cross of Calvary? Thank God for problem. I see a lot of people, you see them in the bus and they, they sit down. Oh, they say, I used to preach. What happened to you? I preached one day policeman caught me and they threw me behind the bar and Zona Ida did not come to bail me and I was preaching you know, I was trying to get people for house fellowship <laughs> and the Zona leader did not come since that time hmm, I closed my mouth they'll never make it I mean the people that cry that cringe that crawl because of problem they'll never make it but the people when David came he saw Goliath bragging and he said praise the Lord. Isn't it wonderful I came on a day like this? And he started asking, this man that is there, Goliath, what are you doing? And Saul, they anointed him king. He has the anointing, but he's not operating in the anointing. He has the name, he's not operating in that name. They call him king, but he was shivering. And this young boy that was just coming from the wilderness, he said, I can deal with him. Where are the twelve tribes of Israel? with all the elders of Israel and with all the fathers in Israel and with the king, the captain of the host of the Lord. Why is he afraid? Leave me alone with him. I will go out. And they started saying, you cannot. That's the word impossible. That's why they failed before David came. We cannot. You cannot. They cannot. Nobody can do it. I cannot do it. You cannot do it. She cannot do it. Women cannot preach. Men cannot preach. Educated people cannot preach. Illiterate cannot preach. Who will preach then? Men cannot preach. Women cannot preach. The young people cannot preach. The old people cannot preach. Those who go to school, they say, oh, they are too educated. They will never preach. Those who are illiterate, they cannot read Bible. They will never preach. Who will preach? And that's what Saul was saying. Nobody can do it. And David said, I'm not part of the nobody. I will do it. I'm different. Even different from all the sons of Jesse we have the same father but we have different faith we have the same father but we have different destiny I am not part of them I have something that is called success running in my blood I'm destined to succeed and so Saul said if you are going to do it God be with you take my armor on you and he tried it and he said all this is not necessary all this is too heavy Goliath is not that important that I'll be carrying all this. It is in the name of the Lord. It is not the heavy armor. Success does not depend on the pile of certificates. Primary school, secondary school, university, diploma, higher institution. Success does not come by that. Leave me alone and get all your jacket and get everything. And get all your, all your gown, academic gown. Leave everything. Let me go the way I am. Let me go with the anointing. Let me go with the power. <laughs> Saul said, you want to go like that, my young boy? I will go. And I'll come back. I'll remove the head of that man. And then, just ordinarily, think about a person that will not even try to protect himself. He believed as the angels are encompassed around Jerusalem. So does the Lord. As the hills are about Jerusalem, does, so does the angel of the Lord encamp around them that fear the Lord. He knew on my left hand there is the angel of the Lord. 
on my right hand the angel of the Lord. Above me the angel of the Lord. In front and behind the angel of the Lord. And the protection of those angels of the Lord. They are more than all the armor of Saul. And he went ahead. When Goliath saw him. He laughed. <laughs> he said look at this young boy. You have not married. You have not got child. They want to waste your life like this. And then he began to curse and said, Am I a dog that will come with ordinary stuff as if you are going to dry away fly, dry away dog? What do you think I am? A champion. And David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And I'm destined to live. I cannot die. But I will live and show forth the glory of God. I'm destined to deal with you. And you are just the first person I'm dealing with. Because when I become a king, all the rest of you Philistines, you get into trouble. It's Saul that will quake and shake for you and shake for you. But you wait. After Saul has gone out of the way and I become a king, now I will use you as a sample. The way I deal with you, Goliath, is the way I will deal with all the Philistines when I come on the throne. It was prophetic. And then he rushed ahead. It was only one stone. He had five stones. All the rest of the four, they are reserved for the time he will be the real king. And he took only one and he snung it and Goliath came down. And then the other people, I told you there are three categories of people. There are people that will never do anything, but when David has done it, they can shout and sing. There are people that you give it to them, they really, this impossible, they are afraid because of impossibility and fear. They will never do anything like Saul. But eventually, after David has done it, they will get the glory. And when they were singing, they said, David has killed his ten thousands and Saul, well, has killed his thousands. We know he didn't kill anybody. But they even gave him some, you know, some benefit and some credit. He was even angry that they said that. But look at David, a man destined to succeed. And I'm asking you this afternoon, are you destined to be a failure? No faith in your heart, nothing that rises up within you that says, I will make it. Doesn't matter my destiny, doesn't matter my background, I will change that destiny. And those are the people that in these last days that will do something for the Lord. The people that know, I will change that destiny. Are you able? Yes. I said, are you able? Yes. Look at Joshua chapter 14 from verse 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Canaanite, and said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said, Unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Verse 10. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake unto, uh, the, this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and lo, now I am this day four score and five years old. As yet, I am as strong. 85 years of age. I am as strong as I was in the day that Moses sent me. My strength was then, as my strength was then. Even so is my strength now for war. Both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, give me this mountain. I need a mountain. At the age of 85, I want to climb. At the age of 85, I want to get involved in the warfare. I want to destroy the enemies of God. And then, we have people today as fellowship leaders. The mountain is too high. I'm getting tired. Zona leader, please release me. I cannot be a house fellowship leader. Our area is so dominated by mummy water spirit dominated by wizards, dominated by witches, and all those occultic people, they have their meeting in a, in a house very near to where we're having a house fellowship, and they have threatened that no Christianity will survive in that place. I cannot do it. Excuse me. 
Another person comes and he says, our area and community is so filled with all these malams and imams and affairs and all these people and they will never yield. We talk and talk and talk. They will never yield. All these goals they are setting for us, impossible impossible how can we do it it can never never be done and then they are running away another person uh, comes and he says all the young people they are now sold to adultery and they are sold to immorality and now because of the lack of money everybody is going on immorality and when we try to win them we try to say come come to the lord they say come to the lord where we're looking for money and we're going to sell our body for money. The, pro the work of the Lord is too difficult. All this pastor that is setting goal, uh, every area within the next uh, few months, you must add 90 to the number. Pastor will just stay at the pulpit and be saying, 90 souls, 90 souls, 90 souls. Uh, <laughs> they think it is easy like that. It's easy for those who are destined to succeed. Those who know, with God, all things are possible. Those who know, God, Christ said, upon this rock I build my church. I will build my church. And the very gates of hell cannot prevail against that church. Now people are saying, ah, this, all these things they are setting for us. I do this. Rich men, it's difficult to get them now. All those rich men, they are in one secret cult or the other. They are trying to protect themselves. And when we go and tell them, ye must be born again. Ah, they say, sit down there. Ye must be born again. In Nigeria today, it is impossible. And so we have borrowed that word from all those people. We ourselves now as children of God, we are just saying, well, Jesus will soon come. Me and my family. If we can make the rapture, well, we will praise the Lord. Even my wife now, some of them will say, I don't know, my wife is getting discouraged. Another person will say, even my husband now, my husband is getting discouraged. We started this ministry together. The person that uh, brought me and witnessed to me and brought me to the church, now I don't know what is happening to him. Now I don't know whether I will backslide myself. Oh God, help me. Oh, if I will backslide before I die, let me die now. The cowards want to die now. But people like Caleb said, I'm 85 years of age, but I've not started my work. I'm just about to start now. Give me this mountain. Joshua, we went out together. And you know what Moses said about me? And I am strong today as I was 45 years ago. Now 80 and 5 years am I, but I'm strong to go out and to come in. Therefore, Joshua, I need a mountain. Make it difficult for me. I don't, don't give me all those. Give that to the Reubenites. Give that to the uh, people of God and to the people of Manasseh. All those simple, simple areas are the plain. Give all that to the people that are of the other tribes. As for me, I need a mountain. If it's not difficult, I don't want it. If it's not hard, I don't want it. Those are the people that will succeed. Zona leader. Those are the people that will make it. Area leader. Those are the people that will be able to do something essential, important for the Lord. Women representatives. You see, we are just women. We are just women. And what can we do in this world? In fact, just to feed now with me and our children, it is difficult. Don't you remember Deborah? And when Deborah calls Israel and said, now you will go. And this is what you will do. Ah, he said, I cannot do this. Or called Barak and said, I cannot do this. He said, only if you will go with me. And Deborah said, I will go with you. But the glory will come to the woman, not to you. And they went and the victory was given to the woman. But today, our women say they cannot do anything. They say nobody will listen to them. They say they do not have the power to convict the word of God in their mouth and the spirit of God in their mouth cannot get the work done. But Caleb said, I will do it. Give me this mountain. And today we're looking for people who know that they are destined to succeed. Not people who are saying that they will fail. With salvation in them, they say they will fail. With sanctification in them, they say they will fail. With the power of the Holy Ghost upon their lives, they are still confessing they will fail. With all the promises of God in their mouth, they are still confessing that they will fail. And with all the things that God has made available for them, they are still saying that they will fail. I know I will not fail. I know I'm going to succeed. I know that the work of God will prosper in my hand. Those are the people that God needs today. Look at First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Chapter 19. And I'm reading there from verse 10. 
First Chronicles chapter 19. Now when Joab saw the battle was set against him before and behind, he chose out of all the choice of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he delivered unto the hand of Abishai, his brother. And they set themselves in array against the children of Ammon. Here there was a battle, and there were two brothers, Joab and Abishai. You know people today, oh, they say, my wife, I'm working for God, but you know it's very dangerous. So if I give myself, you stay behind and stay with the children so that if I die, because you see, all these Juju people, when we try to evangelize them and we try to have open air crusade and open air meeting, you know, they can do anything. So that you are not involved, I am not involved. If they kill me, you will take care of our children. They are preparing for death, not for victory. Two brothers in the church, the one will call the other and say, now we have the same parents. And uh, now if you become zonal leader, I become zonal leader, how shall, we, how shall we have bread and butter? So let us work it out very well. Let us decide. Since we have the same parents, if you say you are going to do this work of God in the church, because you know the work of God in the church is very demanding. They say today, come in the zone. Tomorrow, come in the district. The other time, come in the central church. At another time, come at Bagada. Another time, come at IBTC. If you are a worker, they will walk your fingers to the bone. So, let us think about it. We are brothers together. If you say that you are going to be area leader, then I will step down. So that I can go for trade. I can go for business. I can go for this. I can go for that. Which one do you like? Or do I do it and then you will go and win butter and bread? The other fellow will say, well, since we have the same parents, decide now, okay, uh, you know, I have luck for business. You have luck for Bible. <laughs> Therefore, you go after Bible, I go after business. Because we of the same parents, how can we be in the work of God together? Parents will call their children and say, come, my children, there are two of you that I have. If you go to university, let this one go to business. So that, how can the family give this, the old, are we the only family in the church? This one will go for zona leader. This one will go for missionary. Uh-uh. Do it wisely, my children. I can give one of you to God. So one of you can be working for God. The other one, you can do another thing. But look at two brothers. And these two brothers, they were totally in charge of the enemies at this time. And then, look at what Joab said unto Abishai. He said in verse 12, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the, Ammon, if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will help you. He said, you must succeed, I must succeed. I will be fighting, you will be fighting. I will be walking, you will be walking. If I see that you are going down and those people are too strong for you, I will come and help you. If you see that I am going down and they are too strong for me, you will come and help me. Be of good courage. Let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people and for the cities of our God. And let the Lord do that which is good in his sight. Those are the people destined to succeed. They have determination. But the people that are not determined, the people that are not devoted to the Lord, the people that are not dedicated for the Lord. And every time there's a little difficulty, they run back. How about the goal we set for you in your area? Well, brother, to tell you the truth. That day we were at the workers' meeting, and they were setting all that goal. And 90 people, 20 people, 40 people, I knew it's impossible. I knew our zone. Uh, we are living there. All those churches that have been in our zone, all the other churches, 50, 20, 30, we see them. Even we that get about 40 to come to church, we are trying to you know that uh, when they say another zone is uh, 120 in, in one area, another zone has about 90 in one area. I, I know that their own is different in our zone. I know that all those people, the devil has blinded them, they will go to hell. That's what you want because you are lazy. Because you don't have faith. Because you have those two words troubling you. And mark it down. 
the people that use those two words in the work of God, they will use those two words in their family. You watch them. Any, anytime you go to somebody, if it's a zone leader, area leader, house fellowship leader, you say, brother or sister, how about this? The first thing he says, impossible. Watch him. Just keep quiet and be watching him. In his family life, if he's married, anytime there's a little problem and the in-laws, they said, hi about this, the first word that will come out, impossible. Follow him to his place of work. In his place of work, when they say this, 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 the first word that will come in his mouth, impossible. But Christian, look up here. Look at all these uh, bridges, the flyovers, unbelievers did them. What if those engineers, unbelievers, when they were thinking there is congestion in Lagos, what are we going to do? What if they said, impossible? But they said, we will do it. They called the man and they said, now, can you make all these bridges all over Lagos? Is it possible? Oh, they said, yes, we can do it. Give us a contract. Now they are doing it. Look at all those aeroplanes you see. If you were the people in the world at that time when there was no aeroplane, and people were saying, it takes, such, it takes three months to go from one country to the other, going by sea. Why can't we not shorten this thing? And just make it six hours, 12 hours, you have, you have got there by aeroplane. If they call some of you and they say, can we do it? And there has never been an aeroplane before, you will say, impossible. Those people of the world who are making aeroplane, who are making all these heavy bridges, those people of the world that are making all these experiments, they never say impossible. Why is it you that has Christ, that has Bible, that has Holy Ghost, that is saying impossible? Look at people, missionaries that came from America and Britain. When in this country, there was no education, there was no Bible, no Yoruba Bible, no Igbo Bible, nothing at all. And they came from their countries. And they came to a country like this. Mosquitoes beat them. And they went through a lot of suffering. Right now, they have established Christianity. And we are going on from the, way, from the place they left. What if they said it's impossible? Today, you send missionary out from deeper life. They get to that place. They say, the people don't speak English. The people don't speak the language I hear. Therefore, I cannot do anything there. It's impossible. They come back home. Failure. Why is it we who say we have the power of God, we have the spirit of God, we have the anointing of God, we are the people carrying impossible, impossible, impossible about. Look at all these unbelievers on the side of the road. We try to drive them from uh, selling in near our church. When you drive them one day, they run away. Then five minutes after that, they come behind the corner. They are selling again. If it were Christians selling, if we say Christians, go and distribute tracks somewhere. Once they drive them, ah, that's all. They come back to church, they say, Pastor, impossible. We went out, they drove us. When I was coming to IBTC uh, the other day, this week, I saw those uh, young, young boys and girls, 10 years of age, Eight years of age, having oranges and these little, little things they are selling. Immediately, there is a little bit of ghost slow. They run and run. And I thought to myself, if we call our own boys Christians, and we tell them, young boys like that, and we say, children, go and distribute tract. And they go slow, run after those vehicles. Ah, their parents will say, pastor, our children will die. All these vehicles on the road, all this thing, it will kill our children. The people of the world, they don't think their children will die. Distributing orange, it is a believer who has the protection of the Lord that is thinking that their children will die if they distribute tract. As children, so we who are adults as well. We think our children will die. I was talking to you in the morning about... The people in Sokoto State and Kano and all those places. Anytime I travel over there, I see Yoruba people. Those Yoruba people, they speak Hausa like anything. To sell. Just for trade, for market. And come and see Igbo people in Kaduna speaking Hausa. I look, looking at his face and the marks, uh, you know, on this side of the face. I know this man is Igbo. 
And I, when he opened his mouth and started talking outside, I said, what? Because of business. I went to Ivory Coast and I saw illiterate Yoruba women. And they carried all this big, big heavy load. And when we were at Abidjan, all these uh, market women, Yoruba people, hear French in their mouth. I said, what? For business. Send Christian. Send them to Abidjan. Oh, they will say, when I was school, I didn't know book. Now to go to Abidjan, be speaking French, and be giving the gospel out, impossible. You call some people and say, now come and go to Kano, and come and get to Kadu. I heard that they were born in churches last year. And I heard that one pastor ran, they almost cut his leg. So if I go pastor, I will die. How about the business people that are there? They drive them, they refuse to go. The, we who are Christians, don't you have something in your blood that says, I will succeed. I will make it. I'm destined to succeed. How many of you can succeed? Will you succeed? Yes. In the work of God? Yes. All these goals that were set in, is it possible? Yes. Or do you have impossibility in your blood? No. Impossibility in your brain? No. Rise up and tell the Lord. I will succeed. I will make it. I will do the work of God. I will not fail. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Our Father, we thank and bless you. Thank you for a time like this. A time you have decided to bless us. A time you have decided to change us. A time you have decided to remold us. Father, we bless you. Thank you very much for all these things that we have been hearing since we came. Thank you for a retreat like this that you can bring us together. Thank you for express, uh, exposing yourself unto us. You have made us to see you anew again. Father, we bless and worship your name. For ourselves, our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Since we came since yesterday, you have, been, you have been teaching us step by step. We have been eating at the table of the Lord. Father, all that we have received from you, we are going out into the world now. I want to go and put everything to practice. And we believe you are helping us to do it. I believe you are following us to the world. I believe you are not going to be the same any longer. I believe you are going to help us in all the areas of our lives. I believe you are going to help us to march forward to this world. You are going to help us to grow in our district, Father. Father, Lord, we are asking as we go, go with us in Jesus' name. Amen. We have decided to follow you. Amen. We are not going back again. Amen. We have made up our minds. We have decided. In fact, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are saying as we march forward, march forward with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Jabez was supposed to be a man of sorrow. But he said, I reject it. I won't be a man of sorrow. Satan wants to, be, to make us to be failures. But we are rejecting it. We are saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are not failing. We are going to be successful. And Father, we are, we are, we are destined to be successful. Father, we are going to succeed. Father, we are going to succeed. In your name, we are going to succeed. Amen. By your power, we are going to succeed. Amen. By your anointing, we are going to succeed. Amen. In all the zones, we are going to succeed. Amen. In Maryland, we shall succeed. Amen. In Ogudojota, we shall succeed. Amen. In Inukweju Pan Group, we shall succeed. Amen. In Oworosoki, we shall succeed. Amen. In Alakwaya Demoni, we shall succeed. Father, we are asking Lord Jesus in all the areas and all the zones and all the house furnaces, Father, we are praying that to make us succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, Lord. we are asking you again that you lay your hands upon us afresh. Amen. As we go now, Father, lay your hands upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Many of us who have been sleeping before, we are waking up right now. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit has woken us up. Father, we are praying as we have woken up right now, the world will know us. They will know that we are giants for you. They will know that we are soldiers for you. Father, we are marching forward as the army of the Lord. 
and we are praying that to be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. All those things that will not make us to really fight a battle. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We cancel in the name of Jesus. Amen. All wickedness, we know you have received, removed already. All laziness, we know you have removed already. Father, we are praying that your anointing, your power, will be upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lead us as we go now. Amen. Wherever we may be, even in the church, they will know that we have come. Amen. In our places of work, they will know that we have come. Amen. In the homes where we are living, they will know that we have come. Amen. In all the zones, they will know that we have come. Amen. And heaven will record that we are children of God. Amen. And we shall get there over beyond. And we shall receive our rewards together. Amen. Thank you for having answered our prayers. Glory be to your holy name. Hallelujah. As we go to our different homes now, we are praying that you go with us in Jesus' name. Amen. All our children, lay your hands upon them. Amen. All our wives, lay your hands upon Amen. them. All our husbands, lay your hands upon Amen. them. All our mates, lay your hands upon Amen. them. Father, we are asking all our properties, lay your hands upon them. Amen. Whatever may be the needs of your children right now, I pray that you supply abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are looking for work, this month is a month of miracles. Amen. Those who are looking for children, this month is a month of miracles. Those who are looking for wife, this month is a month of miracles. Amen. Those who are looking for husband, this year is a year of miracles. Amen. Father, perform your miracles. Amen. In the life of every one of us, perform your miracles. Amen. In our zones, perform your miracles. Amen. In our homes, perform your miracles. Amen. All over the places, Father, perform your miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank and bless you. We give glory to your holy name. Because we believe you have answered and prayed. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Because God has been so faithful to me, I'm going to keep this very short. First of all, I want to thank God for the church. The church has been my family. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Dada. He has been a father to me. I don't start crying. Okay, um, I remember I came here without um, scholarship to Harvard University. The first year wasn't easy, but I got a grant that paid half of my tuition. But then from second year, I got like five different scholarships from my department. Same thing, and I thank God because I'll be graduating in May. I didn't have to.